We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our grief, and heals our wounds. Welcome to St. David's Cathedral and to this special service of commemoration for all souls. On or near All Souls Day, many churches traditionally hold a service of remembrance for those who have died during the preceding year and in years past who are still loved and missed from our families. We have come together in our Father's presence to remember our loved ones who have passed through the valley of the shadow of death, to renew our faith and trust in God, to pray for those who mourn, and to seek God's grace that we may know his love and the hope that he gives through faith in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore remember God's presence with us now. We sing our first hymn, which reminds us of God's holiness, using imagery from the Revelation to St. John. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Hear these words of comfort which our Lord Jesus Christ offers to us in trouble and distress. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. 
For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor anything present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, beginning at the 37th verse. Jesus said, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up at the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this commemorative service for All Souls Day, as we give thanks for the lives of those we love and see no longer, and as we celebrate the lives of those buried and memorialized in this holy place, we plead the eternal sacrifice of the dying and rising Christ on behalf of the faithful departed, trusting in the mystery of God's good providence that our prayers and our love can be for their benefit. And as we do so, our thoughts inevitably turn to the questions of death and life, of life beyond life, of life after death. Whatever the strength of our faith, inevitably in the depth of our soul, we will always ask, is there anything after life? What will it be like? Imagination can run wild, but what is there to hold on to? 
You may remember the buzz of the world of science and religion a few years ago around a book published by a distinguished American academic neurosurgeon called Dr. Eben Alexander. The book is called Proof of Heaven and describes his own experience. And this is how the book is described um, on the Amazon UK website. Internationally acclaimed neurosurgeon Dr. Eben Alexander always considered himself a man of science. His unwavering belief in evidence-based medicine fueled a career in the top medical institutions of the world. But all this was set to change. One morning in 2008, he fell into a coma after suffering a rare form of bacterial meningitis. Scans of his brain revealed massive damage. Death was deemed the most likely outcome. And as his family prepared themselves for the worst, something miraculous happened. Dr. Alexander's brain went from near total inactivity to awakening. He made a full recovery, but he was never the same. He woke certain of the infinite reach of the soul. He was certain of a life beyond death. In this astonishing book, Dr. Alexander shares his experience pieced together from the notes he made as soon as he was able to write again. Unlike other accounts of near-death experiences, he's able to explain in depth why his brain was in incapable of fabricating the journey that he'd experienced. His story is one of profound beauty and inspiration. In a recorded interview, Dr. Alexander said, I had a very profound sense of the divine presence and also of the importance of love and how powerful love is in that realm. The publication of the book in this country was welcomed with an avalanche of skeptical comment, as you can imagine. An English professor of neuroscience writing in the Daily Telegraph said, science has progressed by challenge and disagreement, but what is needed to consider seriously the kinds of claims made by Dr. Alexander isn't flowery prose and hyperbolic headlines. It's hard evidence. Professor Blakemore's skepticism isn't surprising, nor should it worry us. There is no possibility of hard evidence of life after death, such as could constitute a scientific proof of heaven. The Catholic writer Peter Stanford in The Guardian said of these near-death experiences, at its most simple, all of these pictures of afterlife touch on the most basic of human needs, something that predates written language, philosophy, and even religion itself. From the time of the first experience of death of someone they love, human beings have wanted there to be something more, something beyond death. There is no scientific proof of heaven, but unless our idea of heaven is of a place up above the bright blue sky, there is equally no possibility of science proving otherwise, that there is no heaven. The idea of heaven is deeply rooted in the Christian tradition, and in the teachings of Jesus Christ himself, he teaches his disciples to pray, our Father in heaven. Heaven is where God is. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus describes God to his disciples as their Father in heaven. But his disciples can themselves have the prospect of heaven. He tells the rich young man to sell all his possessions and give the money to the poor. Then he will find treasure in heaven. In the parable of the judgment of the nations, the king says to those on his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. So our Lord holds out the prospect of being with God in heaven. But that's not all. In the parable of the judgment of the nations, Jesus Christ goes on to condemn those who do not help the needy. The king says to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. In the parable of the rich man and the poor man, Lazarus, 
both whom die, the rich man going to Hades and the poor man to Abraham's bosom, Jesus speaks of a great gulf fixed between the afterlife, between those who have suffered in this life and those who have acted selfishly and ungenerously. The one will go to eternal comfort and the other to a place of eternal torment. It's easy and comfortable for commentators to explain these parables as instructions from our Lord about how we should live, rather than teaching about the reality of life beyond death, about heaven and hell. But we should remember that the teachings and the example of Jesus take immensely seriously both the obligation on his followers to take the hard road, to bear the burden, to take up the cross, and also the goodness and justice, the judgment of God. The Christian life is surely not all sweetness and light, comfort and balm. The battle in us, in our communities, in our nations, and in the world between good and bad, between on the one hand selfish and on the other hand generous attitudes, words and deeds, is one that is very real. And it's a battle that has to be fought. If the battle between good and evil is not joined, it is lost. Light and darkness, pleasure and pain, bliss and torment, good and evil, these are inevitable realities of life on earth. We can see them, we can feel them, we can describe them. Heaven and hell are invisible, unknown, ineffable. We might try speaking of the presence of God and of the absence of God, being with God and being without God, of being eternally in the light or eternally in the darkness, but perhaps it would be better to say nothing at all, to keep silent before these awful realities. Almost so, for we can and must pray for ourselves and for all people, perseverance on the hard road, on the Christian way. On this day of commemoration, even though we fall silent before its mystery, it is inevitable and right that putting our trust in the everlasting mercy of the Father, we should pray for the faithful departed, that through the eternal sacrifice of Calvary and through the eternal life of our risen Lord and the gracious gifts of God the Holy Spirit, alive and active in this body, the Church, they might find eternal rest. Amen.
We light this candle to remind us that when God the Father raised Jesus from the dead, he defeated the power of death and his light shines in the midst of the darkness of this world. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The Lord is the strength of my life. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And so we come to lay down the past and our collect. Light in our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
So let us pray that we may know life and hope in Jesus Christ as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We now sing our final hymn this evening, which draws all the saints and the souls together in that one final triumphal song of praise, Ye Holy Angels Bright. Neither death nor life can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you today and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>